हरे कृष्णा ओ सॉरी जय श्री राम सो डे आफ्टर टुमारो इज द मोस्ट ऑस्पिशियस डे ऑफ द इंस्टॉलेशन ऑफ लॉर्ड राम्स डीटी इन अयोध्या धाम एंड एवरीबडी इज नाउ सेइंग जय श्री राम मोर देन हरे कृष्णा thank you for coming on a saturday evening you could be doing so many things but you have chosen to come here i i deeply appreciate on behalf of iskon you services and radha gopinath mandir we welcome you and this is a very relevant topic i am going to speak on this for a few minutes and this is going to be a very thought provoking one this is called tune in to real world so today's agenda or what i want to share with you is that there is a reality beyond what we see so there is a curtain so behind the curtain there is something else so today i i beseech all of your attention and please with an open heart understand a deeper reality that exists and today we will explore that reality and then as you see the child here trust me when we see reality from a metaphysical perspective then the child within us will be awakened you see how children see the world there is freshness there is innocence there is curiosity you see children they have permanent impressions so when we see reality like this we will also feel the same purity same innocence and same freshness so i invite you to this discussion so you are ready yes thank you thank you for uh, being enthusiastic so okay first let me ask you uh So you don't have to give me deep philosophical answers. Simple common sense answers. What is reality? What like okay? Is this reality? Simple. Yes. What about this? This is also real. This watch is also real, right? Why do we say this is real? Sorry. Because we can see it, touch it, feel it. Basically, what you're saying is. our senses can perceive it so it is real simple so the vedic scriptures explain yes there is something called as physical reality physical reality means two things the senses can perceive either touch smell taste see like that as a second criteria this is a physical reality because this has a beginning and this has an end Hundred years ago, this did not exist, and from hundred years from now, this may not exist in this shape. So, anything which has a beginning and an end, that is what reality. Everybody is clear. Like, for example, what is this body? Does this have a beginning? Fifty-one years ago, nobody knew me. another 100 years from now nobody will care who came hai <laughs> na when we see a building a huge skyscraper building wow it had a beginning it has it has an end one day and if you see carefully the physical reality is all pervading right everywhere it's physical reality and we all want happiness and we are searching for happiness where in physical reality and physical reality has a beginning and an end so our happiness also has beginning and end and geeta explains those who seek happiness in physical reality what is their situation yahi samsparsha ja bhoga dukha yo naya evate दुख यो नयते दे आर गैरंटीड दुख बिकॉज दे आर ट्राइंग टू गेट हैपीनेस फ्रॉम ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ सेंसेज विच कैन बी कॉन्टेक्टेड वॉट इज द प्रॉब्लम विद दिस फिजिकल रियालिटी गीता एक्सप्लेन यही सम स्पर्श जा भोगा दुख यो नय एवते आदि अंत आद्यंत वंत कौंते नु रमते बुधा आदि और अंत है दोनों this kind of happiness has a beginning and end therefore buddha buddhiman vyakti na na ramante he doesn't enjoy this he is smart he doesn't try to enjoy physical reality he seeks something more 
I'll give an example. How many of you travel by Western Railway? Okay, if you are traveling from Virar to South, what is the last station? So, this stop, which station is this? Church Gate. 100 years ago. How do you like this? And which station is this? Virar? No. See, at least Church Gate, you can guess, right? Because it is still active. You know, what is this station? You will be shocked. What is the last station in Western Railway? Church Gate, right? But 100 years ago, you know what was the last station? Kolaba. Kolaba was the last station. Now, I can say this with conviction also because my father was in railways. He was in a very senior post. And he used to take me, when I grew up at Cuff Parade, so he would take me on a Sunday sometimes for a walk towards that area. Now, of course, you can't recognize that place now because there are big buildings there. You show me the remnants of those railway tracks. And you tell me, son, this was the last station. Now imagine these people here, where are they now? Where is the station? The whole landscape has changed, isn't it? This is physical reality. 100 years, everything is changing. Okay, this is interesting. In case you don't believe that Kolaba was the last station, I have another. <laughs> this is a very interesting, do you know this building? Rajabai Tower, which ground is this? Oval Maidan, this is coming from Kolaba. This is a, can you see this train? This is a train coming from Kolaba to Church Gate. It's on the way to Punjab. And what you see here, this is the Arabian Sea, where we have now HR College, Brebon Stadium, Nariman Point, Mantralay. What was that place earlier? Samudra Tabas Ocean. Abhi kya hai? Building hai. Aur aase sao saal baad kya hoga udar? We don't know. <laughs> See, I'll tell you this, one very interesting thing. In 2006, our Madan Gopal Ru took us for one yatra, AYS yatra to Danush Kodi. Scary place. It's like the last point of India where Arabian Sea, Indian Ocean and Bay of Bengal meet. Huge. And Danush Kodi, we had to walk many miles inside. And everywhere there's only water and sand. And you know, that was a flourishing town till 1964. One December evening in 1964, as children were playing in the evening, as women were cooking at home, as men were reading newspapers and relaxing, watching, sorry, not watching, listening to radio, suddenly there was a cyclone. And in a matter of minutes, the whole town vanished. And now there's only sand there. As we were leaving Danush Kodi, I saw one remnants of a water tank as a symbol, as an indication that once this was a flourishing town. That's how physical reality is. My father, you know, in his office in uh, CST, he had kept a big photograph, 1883 and 1983, of VT, uh, CST, that road. And same photograph, same place. But in the second photograph, there were different people. First photograph, there were different people. I would keep looking at both photographs and say, what has happened? How time is so powerful. So this is what reality? Physical reality. So intelligent people, Gita says, do not seek happiness in this reality. Why? It has a beginning and end. But do you know something? Within all this physical reality, there is something that doesn't change. There is something which remains forever. There is something which has no beginning and no end, which is eternal. I saw kuch hai. Like, okay, body, all of you know this basic philosophy, body. Body ke andar kya? Soul, atma. Body will die, but atma remains, right? We say this, according to Gita, Dei no sminyata dehe, kaumaram yavanam jara. For this body is temporary, but the soul is eternal. And because of this soul, the body is going through changes, right? We talk, we sleep, we dance, all of these things is because soul is there. Similarly, in this universe, sun is rising, sun is setting, rainy season is coming, winter has come. All the seasons are changing, trees are giving fruits, flowers are blossoming. That means just like this body has life, because there is soul, 
दिस यूनिवर्स हैज लाइफ बिकॉज दिस यूनिवर्स हैज ऑल्सो सोल कोई तो है जिसकी वजह से पूरा जिंदा है यूनिवर्स एंड दैट सोल इज कॉल्ड परमात्मा सुपर सोल आपको समझ में आ रहा है इट्स नॉट टेक्निकल राइट सो वेन दिस सोल मीन्स दैट सोल वो जो मिलन है वो दैट इज मेटा फिजिकल रियालिटी दैट इज अ रियालिटी बियॉन्ड दिस वर्ल्ड बिकॉज आई डोंट डाई राइट आत्मा नहीं मरती है and there is something eternal in this universe cosmos also so when they meet that is a spiritual experience or is paramatma ko alag alag traditions mein different different names have been given we say what krishna paramatma khiro daksha vishnu there are other traditions which say um force star wars fan will say it's force <laughs> super consciousness cosmic consciousness these are all the terms used for the super soul that is a metaphysical reality so are you understanding what is the spiritual experience what is the metaphysical reality when the i the soul meets the super soul okay i'll tell you some one ordinary one experience see one day i was sitting in hanging garden this is not hanging garden photo but just <laughs> 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 i was sitting under a banyan tree and i was doing meditation i was chanting after my chanting i just sat and suddenly i realized at one you know it was a it was a state of knowing without knowing in the sense it is not knowing at the form of thoughts it's a stage of knowing at the stage of feelings i knew that this banyan tree has been there for a long time so in one sense the banyan tree is eternal not exactly but compared to me it is like 500 years old that caretaker says so if it is 500 years old i suddenly felt there is something within me the i who is also very 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 old <laughs> would have died and somehow i felt that i met the banyan tree who is also been there forever and in that meeting the joy i experienced i cannot describe in words i knew that it is beyond the senses it was not a physical reality that i was in i was in a metaphysical reality i remember once in the hanging garden looking at the stars in the night i was just sitting on the grass and looking at all the stars and the next day i was in perth western australia in 24 hours i traveled and there in the bedroom i was sleeping at night and looking out of the window i was like again looking at all the stars and suddenly i felt connected i felt these are the same stars with whom i was spending the evening yesterday and now they are here i belong to this universe i felt completely insignificant i felt i am nobody at the same time i felt i am somebody very special <laughs> this is a paradox this is a spiritual experience when we feel i am completely insignificant at the same time i belong to krishna when we do deity worship this is what we feel we feel totally insignificant but pyar be on in generally in this world people tell you if you want to feel loved you have to be somebody important hai na log aisa pyar mein kya kya karte i want to be i want to show that i love the one one poet said a very nice thing uh मोहब्बत मुकद्दर है कोई ख्वाब नहीं मोहब्बत मुकद्दर है कोई ख्वाब नहीं ये वो अदा है जिसमें हर कोई कामयाब नहीं जिसे पनाह मिली उन्हें उंगलियों में गिन लो अरे खत्म नहीं हुआ यार <laughs> मोहब्बत मुकद्दर है कोई ख्वाब नहीं ये वो अदा है जिसमें कोई कामयाब नहीं जिन्हें पनहा मिली उन्हें उंगलियों में गिन लो जो बर्बाद हुए हैं उनका कोई हिसाब नहीं सो इन दिस वर्ल्ड फॉर लव पीपल वॉन्ट टू बी समबड़ी सिग्निफिकेंट बट रियल लव इज एक्सपीरियंस्ड वेन यू आर इन सिग्निफिकेंट बिकॉज यू आर कनेक्टिंग टू अ मेटाफिजिकल रियालिटी See, physical reality is experienced through what senses. Therefore, it has a beginning and end. Metaphysical reality is experienced through soul. Therefore, it has no beginning, no end. See, I I I I, I explored this relationship because of an incident that happened with me. I was very fortunate. One day, after the Gaur Purnima festival, His Holiness Sri Radha Swami Maharaj took few brahmacharis on the terrace of the ashram. and he was pointing to the full moon and he showed the full moon to us 
and said, you see this full moon? And we were all looking at it. And Maharaj kept looking at the full moon and then said, you know, this full moon was there 5,000 years ago when Krishna appeared on this planet. He was watching Shankaracharya come and preach. He was there when the Ram Mandir was broken down. He was there when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to this planet. He was there when Shivaji Maharaj, you know, he started, Maharaj started explaining and again and again pointing to the moon. He's seen it all. And that experience I cannot describe. It was like I felt he was taking us to a higher dimension of reality. Something which will never end. And that's a very, very important point. So spiritual experience, Krishna consciousness, what is all this? In simple words, it is about connecting to something that never ends, that never has a beginning. And you are that soul who needs to connect to that reality. You know, traditional spiritual programs, now of course it is different, but till recently, satsang program, spiritual program, Bhagavatam class meant what? It meant pushing people from physical reality to metaphysical reality. That's why in Bhagavatam there is a lot of uh, scolding. Are uto, jago, ushthan, uttishtha, get up, wake up. Like Bhagavatam, Shukdev Goswami says, he gives a lot of gali <laughs> in Bhagavatam. Shwavidvara ushtra khare samstuta parushap pashu nahet karanapato peto jatu nama gadagraja. He is sumar, gade, unt, kutta. <laughs> he is giving gali to the audience so that he is just wanting to shake them because you are absorbed in what reality? Physical reality. Physical reality absorption means what? You are eating, sleeping, having sex, you are defending yourself, you are living like an animal. Get up, wake up. Understand there is an eternal reality. That is spiritual preaching. That is what Srila Prabhupada did, shaking people, telling them about this reality. But nowadays there is a big problem. We cannot shake people from physical reality to metaphysical reality because they are not living in physical reality also. <laughs> they are living in virtual reality. <laughs> So what do we do? <laughs> right? So abhi kya kare? Abhi unko gali denge to aur roenge wo. So now we have to give very pep talks, motivational talks, self-help. Acha acha bolo, mita mita bolo. Because see, at least this is reality, although this is temporary, but at least it is real. But on your smartphone, when you see some images, smart device is real. Physical reality. But uske andar jo naach gana chal raha hai, <laughs> wo kya hai? It doesn't have any basis. So virtual reality is a very, very a real situation because of which people connecting to spiritual life, metaphysical reality has become a very far distant probability. Aajkal to log bas isi mein ghum rahe. Smartphone leke ghum rahe bas. Insaan agar fissal ke gir jaye, to hansi nikal jati hai. Logon ke aad se smartphone gir jaye, to jaan nikal jati hai. To bhoat intense hai. You know, if nowadays, the smartphone epidemic, it's so rampant. See, I also use a smartphone, so I'm not saying, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying, let us be smart. Let us use it smartly. Let us, let us not allow the smartphone to use us. Gen Z or Gen Alpha, abhi jo bachche hain, unke aad se smartphone chin lena matlab, ICU patient ke muh se oxygen mask nikalne ke jas. Oh, they get so agitated. I saw one father take the smartphone from his daughter's hand and the way she was agitated. I remember once in my class, I was saying that, jab hum chote te prabhu, hum log ghar pe bahar sote te, terrace mein sote te. हम वहाँ सोना पसंद करते थे जहाँ चांद तारे दिखे। तो डेट प्रभुजी सेड प्रभुजी आज के बच्चे वहाँ सोना पसंद करते हैं जहाँ चार्जर लगा सके। So that's how life has changed so much. But you ask yourself when you see sunrise, when you see sunrise on your screen, sunset on your screen, when you see beautiful rain on your screen, and then you see real sunset, real sunrise, real rain, what gives you a more fulfilling experience? The real, the physical reality is more fulfilling than virtual reality. Similarly, if we connect to something that doesn't die, 
then that metaphysical reality will give even more deeper experience see you know if you see a dog on the street just running if you are present mindful just see that dog like a child sees as if you are seeing it for the first time or the last time if you are present and mindful just seeing a dog on the street that can entertain you more than the most exotic visual effects on your electronic screen because that is real see i'll tell you one experience i had you know i have a lot of problems uh, in mumbai traffic like i go for my walk sometimes in the evenings and mornings you know this horns pa pa yeah, irritates me and outside my room there is a crow which comes and constantly calls ka 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 and that also irritates me so i i was very disturbed so then i decided okay wait let me try something i said for the next one week i did an experiment whenever i hear traffic horn as i'm walking or whenever i'm in my room and i hear the crows calling instead of getting irritated i will just pause and i will listen to that sound and look at the crow or the traffic as if i am seeing it for the first time or the last time as if after after hearing this sound my ears will be broken now this is the last time i am hearing or the first time i am hearing i did that for one week whenever i heard this sound i just present without judging observe without judging i did that and after one week <laughs> that problem just dissolved because i was connected to the reality i was not troubled i was not in my mind world and also when we live in the physical reality before we jump into the metaphysical physical reality is a launching pad but we have to, we can't be in virtual reality and jump to metaphysical reality are you getting it ground floor se second floor mein jana hai to pehle first floor mein aana padega see when we are, when we are living in this reality and praying to krishna chanting hearing bhagavatam class then there is a good chance that we will connect to that lord within i'll tell you one example when i was in college and i'm talking about 1991 1992 we didn't have smartphones mobile phones i'll just give one one example one incident tell me how this incident would happen today you are also going to college i was also going to college in 1991 so one incident happened with me if this incident happens with you today you just see how how you would react so i and my friend decided we will meet at the regal bus stop from there we decided to go to rhythm house there was a music shop where we would buy cassettes then we decided we had already planned this the previous evening that after rhythm house we will go to indian merchants chamber photocopy some uh, some articles then go to my college library and on the way we will eat sandwiches at one place where we knew that we get sandwiches so we made a plan like this simple like all of you also make plans like this i went next day morning at 10 o'clock i was at the bus stop as we had planned and during those days we didn't have mobile phone so we used to carry books real books to read not kindle not ipad so i had that book at the bus stop and was reading and suddenly i realized are क्या हो गया ही इज नॉट कम जय श्री शादा गोपीनाथ भगवान की जय निताय गौर चंद्र की जय गोपाल जी की जय सो आई सो घड़ी देखा टेन फिफ्टीन हो गया अरे पंद्रह मिनट हो गया आया नहीं आई वेट सो आई रेड वन मोर चैप्टर ऑफ द बुक टेन ट्वेंटी आई वेंट टू द पी सी ओ आई कॉल डिज हाउस नो बडी वॉज पिकिंग अप द फोन देन आई कॉल्ड माई हाउस आस्किंग माई मॉम डिड ई कॉल यू she said no he is not called me so i went back to the bus stop and i stayed there for some more time reading another chapter at 10:40 i realized 40 minute ho gaya he may not come and i trusted my intuition i went to rhythm house brought the cassettes he wanted then i went to indian merchants chamber and then i said no i won't photocopy because i'll need his inputs but i brought sandwiches for him i assumed that he will come to the library he may have got stuck somewhere and then i went to the library with the sandwiches packed and then after some time he came there and we met and we didn't make a big deal of it he knew that i would have kept sandwiches for him he was hungry he ate that and then we went to indian merchant chamber photocopied we didn't talk about it for days are there kaise malum main udhar rahunga sandwich kaise liya today if this incident were to happen you would have texted him before you left your house abhi main bus stop ja raha hu abhi 2 minute mein bus stop pahunch raha hu tu kidhar hai are kahan ho gaya kya so we do, we don't no time to trust our intuition at all but now when i look back wow how did that happen it was like a magic <laughs> how did he how did i know he will come there how did he know that i would have already packed sandwiches 
because somewhere we were governed by a by an inner sense of knowing see have you read journey home book is olina vadana swami maharaj's book it's a beautiful book there he writes a story of how he and gary met at three different places at different time zones suddenly they are very close friends they separate in israel they meet in nepal in one rice paddy field like this they meet three times so if somebody modern time who is only involved in virtual reality he will think this is some mythology but this kind of reality exists super soul guides us because there is something that doesn't die something that doesn't take birth please repeat this verse after me avinashitu tadviddhi भगवदीता कृष्ण से दर इज समथिंग विच इज अविनाशी विच डजेंट गेट डिस्ट्रॉइड विच परवेड्स दि होल बॉडी एवरीथिंग विल गेट डिस्ट्रॉइड बट दिस डजेंट गेट डिस्ट्रॉइड that is the i that is the soul and he gives a krishna gives a beautiful example which all of us can relate to this is also a beautiful verse which is an analogy example krishna gives please repeat this vasam si jirnani yatha vihaya vasam si jirnani yatha vihaya nava nigrnhati naro parani तथा शरीरा विहाय जीर्णा अन्या संति न वेहिवासी जीर्णा जस्ट लाइक द क्लोथ वेन दे बिकम ओल्ड वी डिस्कार्ड देम सिमिलरली न वृणहाति न रोपर वी टेक न्यू क्लोथ सिमिलरली तथा शरीरा विहाय जीर्णा we give up this body and take another body the soul is always there in fact the gita emphatically declares in the eighth chapter that when the whole world gets destroyed something doesn't get destroyed and beyond this world there is another reality paras tasmat to bhavonyo vyakto vyakta sanatana yasa sarveshu bhuteshu nashyatsu na vinashyati so i appeal to all of you you are all young intelligent smart understand what is this reality i want to connect to this reality i want to experience and have this soul realization and the first step is enter this kind of space where traditions are being carried on for decades coming to an area where metaphysical reality is being explored how many of you have been here what is this place jagannath puri so in jagannath puri for thousands of years same worship same things are going on when you enter that space you feel you are also eternal like in radha gopinath mandir you saw radha gopinath gdt they are being worshiped every day six times since 1988 how many of you are born after 1988 so many of you see that means even before you were born radha gopinath ji was standing playing flute looking at all of you your parents <laughs> your elders us and now they're looking and now they'll continue to see so many things have happened in the last 35 years right but their service is going on so many happy moments so many anxiety that 2611 terrorist attack the terrorists were caught here just 100 meters 50 meters from here there was so much of fear and uncertainty at that time and there was floods in mumbai in 2006 so many things have happened in the last so many years but radha gopina seva is going on consistently so when we enter this space and we chant we hear we associate we slowly tap that reality i hope all of you are understanding what we are discussing see i'll tell you this experience i i come from a small town called udupi so during covid i was staying there for 8 months with my mother so udupi since 1300 when 1320 since shripad madhvacharya's time same tradition is being followed so at that time very people less people were there most people were not coming out of the house but i would go because i had to chant my rounds i would go to this temple shiva temple there and chandra temple and these temples have been same thing is going on 
So in the morning, the sannyasis would come and do their parikrama, chant mantras. And when you was when I was there, it was as if I am sitting on a time machine and I've been transported to 13th century. Same rituals, same tradition, same ambience. It was surreal. I I felt I have been transported to a different dimension of existence. And there is inside there is Vrindavan. There is a place where all the samadhis of the sannyasis are kept. And these sannyasis have lived for 90, 95 years of age, serving Krishna. In nobody knows them for so many decades, for so many centuries. This is going on. So when you are in that space, you become spiritual. You get spiritual realizations. I remember there is one samadhi of tiger. And that is the actually next to that is a samadhi of the sannyasi Raghu Pravira Tirtha Swami Ji. of adamarmat in 1865 he used to worship krishna and do abhishek of the udupi krishna deity and he used to take the milk of his favorite cow and that day the cow had not come back from the pasturing grounds the man who had taken the cows he reported that this cow is missing and then it was revealed that the tiger in the forest had pounced on that cow and for so that cow is dead for this ragu pravira tirtha swami ji felt so sad that his favorite cow krishna's favorite cow that cow milk was being used to bathe krishna is been killed by tiger so feeling great sadness he sat outside the matha his temple adamaramat and he started doing meditation in repentance and the paramatma remember the reality the un i said soul and super soul the super soul in the heart of the tiger revealed to the tiger what is happening and the shock of all the residents in udupi the tiger came there outside the mat and everybody running here and there and the tiger came right in front of this swami ji paid full dandavat to him and left his body and in honor of that incident they made the samadhi of the tiger there so the point i'm saying is these are all mystical pastimes but the point this shows is that there is a reality which we are not able to perceive with our senses to perceive this reality we need to enter the soul space I'll just tell one more story of my. See, I'm just sharing this because I want to give you hope that there is something called a spiritual experience. So during this COVID time, when I was with my mother, one day there was a cyclone, and an ancestral house. I was at kept my mosquito net on top. It just flew away, and a huge long snake fell on the terrace, and our shutters threw away. The trees were swinging wildly. I felt our whole house is going to be uprooted. It was dark at night. The lights went off. Electricity was not there. and my mother is was very sick and she couldn't get out of the bed and raining heavily and we didn't know where to go and at one point of time i realized that we are going to die now it was as if the sword of death was hanging above our heads and but every day morning to our evening to us we used to chant i used to read bhagavatam to my mom she was lying on the bed so at that particular point of time i felt i'm going to die i, I became little little nervous jittery but at that time i just held my mother's hand and she looked at me i looked at her and lying on the bed she said son if this is it let it be <laughs> she just said that and i remember at that point of time suddenly feeling overwhelming sense of peace coming into my heart it was as if sab khatam hone wala hai at the same time i felt i'm ready theek hai i felt i don't belong to this world that was for a few minutes that peace i cannot describe see right you may feel peaceful when you are sitting on the bank of an ocean or in a mountain aisa lagta hai na thoda shant lagta hai aapko how many of you have felt peaceful when you have gone for trekking to a mountain or ocean forest ah uh, you know why you have felt peaceful because that mountain ocean forest has been there forever compared to your body and there is something within you which has also been there forever so that person is meeting that person <laughs> and that is why you feel peace you don't even know why you feel peace so at that point of time when i was about to die i thought i'm going to die i was feeling so peaceful so i realized that there is something deeper and therefore bhagavatam tells us very powerful verse please repeat this after me ye ye bhupatayo rajan ye भुंजते भुवमोजसाजते भुवमोजसा 
context before this shloka whole chapter shukdev goswami gives names of extremely powerful kings who ruled the entire planet they were not president of one country they were ruling the whole planet many kings names he gives and those names are so many names and the, each one of them ruled for 500 years somebody ruled for 1000 years <laughs> long long time they were ruling and after the whole list this is the verse that comes what is that ye ye bhupatayo rajan e rajan ye sab log hain ye log they were bhupati they were lord of the whole planet bunjate bhuvam ojasa they enjoyed when they were ruling ojasa with complete sensual power they enjoyed but who are they today kale nate krita sarve by the power of time they are simply kata matra kata sucha they are simply names in history that's it or kuch nahi shila propas said he was in shila propas in france and france people love napoleon bonaparte and propas said so napoleon said i am france france is napoleon france is still there where is napoleon <laughs> <laughs> Shila Prabhupa that this amazing ability to puncture our absorption in physical reality so therefore we appeal to you come on tap this you are young you have intelligence so shila prabhupa was in jagannath puri in 1977 he was on a morning walk in the beach he was walking with his disciples he had his walking cane and suddenly shila prabhupa so stopped and devotees saw propad stopped and propad looked and smiled propad smiled because one young boy your age 20 22 year old boy was running in the ocean the ocean waves were hitting him and he was jumping and propad looked at his disciples and said you see this boy i was like him in the year 1920 when i was a 24 year old boy i came to jagannath puri and i was also jumping just like him in the ocean and today 1977 57 years have passed like this 57 years nikal gaya that's how powerful time is so why are we absorbed in enjoying that which is temporary see one once in bhagavad gita course jsd course gaur gopal prabhu was teaching we were assisting him 1996, 797 की बात है बहुत पुराना स्टोरी है सो वन बॉय सडनली रेस्ट इज हैंड बिकॉज इट वॉज द री इनकारनेशन क्लास ऑन हु एम आई दोल एग्जिस्ट वन बॉय रेस्ट इज हैंड इज सेट आई एम आर री इनकारनेशन केस वी थॉट ए इज ट्राइंग टू गेट पता ना समटाइम्स यू गेट वॉन्ट अटेंशन यू डू दैट एंड ही ऑल्सो रियलाइज ओ ओ ओ पीपल आर थिंकिंग आई एम ट्राइंग टू गेट अटेंशन केप्ट क्वाइट द नेक्स्ट डे फोर्थ सेशन नेक्स्ट डे इवनिंग वेन यू केम यू ब्रॉट वन बिग फाइल and that of all the newspaper cuttings and reports from 1979 to 1983 covering his story and then we realized he was the reincarnation story studied extensively by dr ian stevenson who is like considered as galileo of the 20th century he scientifically proved that reincarnation exists and his indian assistant was dr satyan pasricha who was the chairman and managing director of nimams national institute of mental health and neurosciences bengaluru so they have studied they study only children's stories of reincarnation because they know that children can't um, can't have their own you know they can't allow the pigment of their own imagination to run wild so it's difficult for children to cook up stories so deep kapadia that was his name and in, he was born in borivilli may 1979 at the age of one and a half he starts stuttering in marwadi language gujarati parents and they are thinking marwadi kaise bol raha And at age of two and a half, he says, "Gar kitna chota hai? Amara ghar mein bathroom bhi isse bada hai." We are like, "Ye kya bol raha hai?" And he says, "Mera ghar Udaipur mein." Udaipur, hari to. And they started getting confused. So they took him to Doctor Ramakant Kenny, who was their family doctor. He said, "This child, they did IQ test. Two-year-old child has IQ of ten-year-old boy." So they had to take him to a parapsychologist, Doctor Mitani. He said, "This is a reincarnation case. Let us test him." He is talking about Udaipur. Let us go to Udaipur without telling him we are going to Udaipur. So this is a three-year-old child. So the news meanwhile spreads. Bharat Gelani from Chitra Lekha magazine, which is the most famous Gujarati magazine, he comes there to cover the story. That time, one Bollywood movie had become famous on reincarnation. So the parents were scared. They said, "No, no, we don't want any publicity." He said, "No, I will not cover this story till it is proved." 
So everybody is divided to go to Udaipur, but they told the child they are going to Nathwara. And to go to Nathwara, which is around 800 miles from Mumbai, you have to go first to Udaipur. So they sat in the bus. And as they reached Udaipur, the child, three-year-old child, automatically got out of the bus. And he sat on the rickshaw. And all this team, Dr. Ian Stevenson's team was also there. They were all there. And he's sitting, Victoria Memorial Leja, Fateh Stand Leja, City Palace Leja. He's telling all of them. He's telling all these names to the driver. And they're all observing. And they go and he says, Mere ghar pe le. and then he, he took the auto to his house, previous life ka house. And there his son of the previous life was there. The son is big man and his three-year-old child looks at him and says, Beta. <laughs> <laughs> this is all documented by Ian Stevenson. So this, 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 this is like, what is this? They are all shocked. And then the parents explain, see, this is our child, this is your father. What are you saying? So then he explains the reincarnation story. So then they say, no, 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 this is some spooky story. They want some share in the property. They are doing a whole drama. So they said, no, no, get out. So then the parents explained, see, we, so deep Kapad, Kapadias were good family, cultured people from Burivilli, Gujarati family. They said, we don't have time pass, we are so far away. We are also confused, we are also in problem. So then finally, that deep Kapadia previous life son, his friends were also there. And they said, hey, dick, 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 your neck, his neck is the same. Hai. Thoda, features dek. Then they saw the photograph of this boy's father, who is deep Kapadia in the previous life. I, I don't get confused, na, please. Sab. And they thought, it's similar features. Hai. And then they understood, the features are the same. Hai. And then, guess what? One elderly lady came in. She was Deep Kapadia, previous life's wife. She, now she looked like grandmother of this child. And this child is calling his BB. <laughs> He's calling her by her pet name. And then everybody is shocked. And then he started revealing some secrets which only both of them knew. And then they said, Aray, to hai. So then, you know what this man did, who is apparently the son? He said, hai, hum ja ke dekhte hai, aapko kya -kya pata hai. Now, it's a very interesting sight. Deep Kapadia is held in the arms of his son. So, son is carrying the father in his arms. <laughs> and they go to city palace. And in the city palace, Deep Kapadia points out to one big painting and he says, painting nikalo piche, bada tunnel hai. They said, Aisa kuch nahi hai. They said, I'm telling you. And then they did that, they found it. And he started telling about one secret fan which is operated by kerosene. And they were like shocked. And today also if you go to Udaipur city palace, the tour guide will tell you that this was revealed to us by Pannalal Agarwal, who was reborn as Deep Kapadia. Pannalal Agarwal was Maharana Fateh Singh, who was the 44th descendant of Maharana Pratap, his chief security officer in the city palace. Some people were envious of him and they fed him poisoned milk and he was killed. And he was born two years later as Deep Kapadia. Even today you can chat with Deep Kapadia. He's on Facebook, active, he's a mathematics professor. I spoke to him also on the phone. And I, I took his interview for my book, which I was writing at that point of time. So why I'm saying all this is, see, this is a reality. See, when Panala Agarwal died, his body was burnt. That means brain also gone, everything is gone. But something, somebody is there. Otherwise, how will Deep Kapadia speak all this? So what I'm trying to say is, Please ask these questions which Sanatan Goswami asked. Ke ami, ke ne amar, jara tapatre, who am I? Srila Prabhupada wanted us to ask these questions. You know, Gautam Buddha, how did he become Gautam Buddha? Prince Siddhartha was asking questions. He saw somebody dying. You know this story? He asked his minister, who is this? The minister said he is diseased, he's died, or he's all those four things he saw. So you need to also have your Prince Siddhartha moment. You need to ask these questions. This is the curiosity. See, when you hear something which challenges your intelligence, please don't challenge, become curious. And Srila Prabhupada says, we can chant Hare Krishna whole day and we never get tired. You don't say, Hare Kuch bhi, aja kaisa ho sakta. Don't challenge. Instead you ask, how can somebody chant whole day and not get tired? Become curious. Kuch to hai. See, Abdul Kalam, I was reading his book some years ago. He's an amazing uh, personality, right? Dr. Abdul Kalam, incidentally, was a great fan of Mahabharat, New Sanskrit. He had written a poem on Vidura. 
he says i am more of a tamil brahmin than a muslim <laughs> so uh, abdul kalam he writes he, he's, he used to give lot of lectures to children so he has done more than 5000 seminars for children school children in one program one child asked him in front of huge audience who is the world's first scientist and abdul kalam gave one word answer one sentence answer and there was thunder of applause he said the world's a child is the world's first scientist because the child is always curious wants to know because once and abdul kalam would always answer questions but one day in one program one child asked him there is so much water in brahmaputra river and there is no water in rajasthan why not transfer that water from brahmaputra to rajasthan problem solved so abdul kalam was thinking how do i explain to the child that water is a state issue state government issue river river water and transferring that would be a central government issue so how do i explain this challenge to this child <laughs> because the child is not seeing what is not child is not child is always in the possibility mindset karna hai curiosity so spiritual life means we need to have this possibility mindset curiosity mindset mujhe janna hai ye sachai kya hai i want to rise go beyond actually i'm rushing through some of the slides because i also want to take some questions we want to have some discussions see basically when we are absorbed in our life it is like having a 5 rupee coin close to your eyes you know sometimes when you keep a coin very close to your eyes and look at the sun you know the sun's vision can be blocked but is the coin so big that it can cover the sun why is the coin able to cover the sun's vision because it is close to our eyes and how many times bigger is the sun compared to the coin quadrillion times but even that small coin has the ability to cover our vision of the sun similarly our problems our issues we are always in our own world na mind mein they are so big sometimes and we keep it so close to our consciousness that we are not able to see the metaphysical reality we are not able to see krishna we are not able to see shrimad bhagavatam we are so blinded by our own petty five rupee issues that for after the world cup india lost one boy rahul lunar from kolkata he committed suicide he just couldn't take that pain why that five rupee coin was so close to his eyes he couldn't visualize the reality beyond his immediate immediate pain okay during that time when india lost to australia in the world cup finals around that same time 40 workers in uttarkashi were trapped in a tunnel and the rescue operations included a big team which included australians so few days before in the india australia match it was india versus australia and a few days later it was india and australia and the whole nation was glued to this to their to this news it was an intense news right and all of them all of them were rescued so if you had given if you were given a choice india wins the world cup but they won't be saved or if you had a choice india will lose the world cup finals but they will be saved what would you prefer or everyone would prefer the second option why because intuitively we know that there is a bigger reality the reality of love it's not i versus you it is i and you that's how we are all connected to each other that is a metaphysical reality when i was a young boy bollywood movies were very cliched every story would be same there was hero and his brother both heroes in the kumbh mela they would get separated <laughs> and then they would become enemies and they would fight against each other in the last scene of the movie just about to the, one one of them is going to kill the other fellow suddenly he says are nishan mera bhi nishan <laughs> bye bye <laughs> you know that is how the movies used to be and then suddenly the enemies become friends they become brothers because same nishan they see their root oh hamara ek hi baba why i'm saying this stupid example is because we are all connected to each other because krishna our param pita is same so that's why when 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 there were australians helping in the same rescue operation there were indians also there were some people who were doing yoga they were sending kichdi through pipes to the tunnel workers inside trapped somebody was sending them the phones and games what all they were doing to help them and the whole the whole world was watching this it was an amazing experience it it brought out humanity what i'm saying is 
this is the we are talking about the physical reality there is goodness in physical reality and then we rise we raise our consciousness and enter the metaphysical space see russia and ukraine are on war when the war started i remember doing a program here in our conference room devotees from russia and ukraine were here they are living together in mayapur and there's a community of vaishnavas they have a whole colony so the in the world they are fight in russia they are fighting but here they are living together how krishna brings everyone together and that reality is what we want to explore and that reality we can touch when we have these practices of hearing like what you are doing now hearing chanting service this is what helps us access this reality and then when we see krishna then everything makes sense we start loving everyone see our problem is many of us are like a dog if you throw a bone at the dog what does the dog do dog gets busy with the bone he is happy with the bone and he is only thinking of the bone if you throw a bone at the dog the dog is absorbed in the bone he can't think of anything else but if you throw a bone at a lion <laughs> what will happen will the lion look at the bone look at the bone thrower and you look एंड वो घूर के देखेगा कौन फेंका राइट सो वॉट आई एम सेंग इज इन अवर लाइफ बोन इज लाइक द सर्कमस्टांसेस चैलेंजेस प्रॉब्लम सिचुएशन लाइफ थ्रो जेट अस राइट सबके लाइफ में आता है सो इफ यू आर डॉग वी विल बी ओनली थिंकिंग ऑफ दैट ओनली प्रॉब्लम वी कैन थिंक बियॉन्ड इट वी विल बी एब्सॉर्ब इन फिजिकल रियालिटी वी हैव टू बिकम लायन वी हैव टू सी हु इज थ्रोइंग there is krishna who's giving us that bone that's why our lord is half man half lion nowadays we are more interested in half man half bat half man half spider that is our problem <laughs> but krishna is throwing this bones we need to see a reality beyond our present situation and that vision we get when we start hearing what we are doing now is hearing scriptures this is the starting step please don't underestimate the power of what you are doing just now live hearing of classes chanting service this is the way we access metaphysical reality and trust me not because i am saying hari krishna you know there are even management gurus the greatest management guru of 20th century all time magazine everyone has acknowledged this is dr steven kavi who the author of the most famous seven habits of highly effective people and he writes in his books <clears throat> about one power of conscience he says for human endowments it's a, i'm not getting into the details of that book but one of the points he says is if you want to tap our inner power conscience he says we need to hear scriptures and study scriptures dutifully he is not a hare krishna devotee and i thought oh oh what is he saying scriptures i thought maybe he means something else aisa hota hai na uska koi definition hi alag hoga like before coming to iskon pizza i had a different definition only of pizza So everybody has own, own definition. So similarly, scripture. I don't know what he means. So I went to the appendix of the book. There's a book he has written called uh, First Things First about time management. So in the end of the book, he speaks about scriptures, and there he gives names of Bhagavad Gita, Ramayan, Mahabharata as scriptures. So I understood. Oh, he knows what he's saying. So what happens when we read and hear scriptures, Bhagavatam, Ramayan, that Paramatma gets awake. we went for a yatra to sri lanka some years ago with a group of devotees from mumbai all the places ashok vatika and all those places and we were doing yuddha kand stories and but many places we were going no i used to see ravana bar and restaurant you know ravana is very popular there in sri lanka <laughs> so i was describing the war past times nine days war ramayan pura hum log kar rahe the aur kumbhakaran tak indrajit tak mara wo ravan ko nahi mara udhar बोला रावण को बॉम्बे जाके मारेंगे श्रीलंका में इज क्वाइट पॉपुलर देर सो वी वेर देर इन मेनी सो आई टू डू राम कथा इन द मॉर्निंग एंड सॉरी इवनिंग एंड मॉर्निंग आई टू डू सेमिनार्स लाइक रिलेशनशिप सेमिनार्स फर्गीवनेस सेमिनार्स ऑल दोस यू नो वर्कशॉप्स एंड ऑल दोस थिंग्स सो इन द एंड ऑफ द यात्रा एवरीबडी सेट द इवनिंग राम कथा वॉज वेरी नरिशिंग एंड आई सेट बट आप लोगों को तो पता है रामायण इतने साल से आप सुन रहे हैं दिस इट ब्यूटिफुल ऑल ऑफ दम सेट प्रभु जी सब पता है पर वही चीज सुनने में ना जो आनंद है it is the same thing same ram 
then i said it is not it is not simply that there is some spiritual power in these scriptures see these scriptures are not ordinary whether it is bhagavad gita or bhagavatam all these scriptures are specially see they are not written by ordinary humans they are divinely empowered i'll give an example of ramayan for example see ramayan how it begins now because day after tomorrow is a very auspicious day so we should give examples from ramayan see ramayan valmiki muni begins by seeing two kruncha birds kruncha birds is saras crane so he sees them mating and uh, the hunter shoots an arrow at the male and the female is wailing she is feeling lot of pain that her partner has been killed so in great anger valmiki pronounces a curse manishad pratishthama samagama shashvati sama yat kruncha mitu na dekha yadavadi kama mohita he says oh they were enjoying and you shot may you be cursed like that he, out of his shoka a shloka comes so he is very surprised and he is explaining how this kruncha bird the female once her partner dies she never takes another partner this is said in lakhs of years ago by valmiki muni in ramayan and just 100 years 80 years ago the ornithology ornithology is a branch of zoology zoology studies animals and birds ornithology studies birds so ornithologists just 80 years ago proved that saras crane species they actually have this trait the female when her male partner is killed or dies she never accepts another partner so what has taken mankind to discover only recently already it is there in ramayan and it is mentioned very non challengely you know what i'm saying it's like not it's not like wait we're going to reveal something amazing no it's very <laughs> it's like it's a well known fact like how bharat and shatrughna are coming back from their uh, maternal uh, grandparents house so they were fr- kaike was from ukraine russia side so you know their traveling is described and you will see wow that's how the travel was till recently the deers and the dogs are you know those what is that called i don't know that kind of uh, sled uh, sled you know That, so that's kind of a that kind of a vehicle they had those vehicles are also described in ramayan in fact russia is a phonetic misnomer for rishi many rishis went there many many years ago in fact if you read ramayan you will see that ramayan is not only entertaining but also enlightening because ramayan main mood of ramayan is sacrifice giving up giving up for service like you know uh, gorgopal prabhu says beautifully he says the world is believing in ice cream philosophy ice cream philosophy is enjoy before it melts and he said there is another philosophy called candle philosophy candle is bring light before it melts so he says we as devotees because we are students of ramayan we have accepted the candle philosophy we want to bring light we want to help because anyway we are going to melt anyway we are going to die so if you see in ramayan everybody is making a sacrifice lakshman is giving up Bharat has given up his kingdom. Sita has gone to the forest. Everybody, in fact, you know, nowadays everybody talks about freedom. In New York, they have the Statue of Liberty, but we need a Statue of Responsibility. That is what our Honorable Prime Minister is trying to do. You know, we need we need people to take responsibility. That's what Shri Prabhupada wanted. Sita Ram, Lakshman, Hanuman, D T is in Washington. He said Washington is the capital of America. America is the capital of the world. so we need leadership ramayan ram represents the ideal leadership so shila prabhupad wanted sita ram lakshman hanuman it is in washington he said we should have ram lakshman sita hanuman it is installed in london because london is the capital of the entire europe at that time shila prabhupad wanted sita ram lakshman hanuman it is in delhi because delhi is the capital of india and he also desired sita ram lakshman hanuman it is in mumbai because he said mumbai is the financial capital of india so therefore this is our glorious vedic scriptures in fact in ramayana you will find many such trivia you know when bharat is angry with his mother kaike for uh, banishing ram many things he tells his mother one of the things he says is mother you don't understand you are from the land where the oldest son always rules so how can you make me the king don't you know in your kingdom even the peacocks they choose their eldest who has the crest on the head as the ruler now bharat is saying this in a very it's one of the shlokas but if you compare life of ukraine and russia before 11th century you will find lot of artifacts paintings arts 
all of them you will find them having peacock with the crest these are all traditional discoveries in ukraine and russia see basically this uh, ram mandir program which is going to happen day after tomorrow is not simply a hindu temple it's it's representing uh, the civilizational ethos of bharat because ramayan as widespread influence all over the world we just don't know actually you know what is this body of water you see where is this from anybody any guesses this is river sita where is this river kabravosk in russia so i've written a book called lessons from the road this was released last year so during my travels to russia what i saw traveling in the villages of india meeting different people so there are a lot of interesting facets i've shared in this book so you can take it is a not it's not very highly priced it's available down so in kabravosk in russia there is a river called sita and people there for them you know there is a lake called ram there is a lake called moksha there is a deity of vishnu found in volga district in fact william james one of the noted historians in 1820 said ramayan is so powerful and influential that peru cambodia mexico brazil everywhere ramayan remnants are found therefore the father of history will durant he has said this amazing statement india was the motherland of our race and sanskrit the mother of european languages india is the mother of our philosophy of our mathematics of the ideals embodied in christianity of self government and democracy mother india is in many ways the mother of us all he is the author of story of civilization even iraq if you go you know there are so many places called ramadi ramya in fact in israel there is ramallah <laughs> place in fact in iraq you will find a lot of carvings of sita ram lakshman hanuman in many of the places warner brothers released a hollywood movie some years ago called sara where a little girl the whole movie is based on her rendition of ramayan see ramayan has universal appeal it has a story and the plot of a princess in distress and the hero saving see it is it is it oh, spoilers are already there everybody knows what the story but still it is so fascinating there are more than 300 versions of ramayan everywhere ramayan was spread so this 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 event that is happening is not simply an ordinary temple this is representing the glory of bharat this is an opportunity for all of us to feel proud in fact ramayan in the shrimad bhagavatam only two chapters are there because at that time ramayan was well known 5000 years ago ramayan was very well known already in fact when devotees met emperor hail selasi of ethiopia in the early 70s they gave him ramayan as a gift why because in ethiopia they all accept that they are descendants of kush ram's son kush they call themselves as kushites in fact emperor hail selasi said yes we are all descendants of kush lord ram's son in fact in the bible they have the story of uh, they are, i don't know how they pronounce it it's c u s h i t e s kushites they call themselves as kushites kusha they say is the son of ham ham is a phonetic misnomer for ram see phonetic is the way the sound is pronounced or spelled but uh, because of time gap the sound changes like lord ram shot an arrow at maricha and he fell so many miles away in the ocean on that side of an island and there he stayed and that maricha the place where maricha fell became oricha and then it became mauritius see if you see uh, this is a which place egypt egypt is actually derived from ajpati ajpati was a uh, forefather of dasharath maharaj in fact even today if you ask egyptians their traditional most famous personality is queen this is their queen sita men sita men she is sita men that's her name she is the most important personality in their legends so see ethiopia is what 5000 kilometers from india egypt is around 7000 like that now if i tell you this example the next one the last one i'm just trying to give you an uh, an idea of how we are dealing with books and scriptures which are extremely powerful and potent and they had widespread influence and now we are getting it on a platter don't underestimate its power now you may think this is too far fetched this is rome rome is derived from ram You may say, "Arey, probably they are both more fake, right?" Okay. If you go into history, Rome was founded on 21st April 753 BC. Now, if you calculate according to 
the Vedic calculations, that is the exact date, that is the date on which Ram Navami falls. And Rome was founded by the Etruscan civilization. And if you see in Rome, there are many places, many tourist sites, many ancient archaeological discoveries where you will find walls with these paintings, these kind of paintings where two men and a woman and men have bows and arrows. How do you explain this? Okay, Rome, diametrically opposite Rome. Today you can go there as a tourist. On the western side of Rome, exactly opposite of Rome is this city called Ravenna. Ravana is coming from Ravana. So, so Ravana is opposite of Ram. And there you will find in the caves carvings of monkeys carrying stones, boulders, men with bow and arrows. This is not simply Rome or Ethiopia or, um, or you know, Egypt. In fact, if you go to see Iranians worship fire. Fire is an essential element of Vedic Yajna. Armenia, there is a temple of little blue boy. They worship. In fact, French historians have established that our Armenians used to worship Radha and Krishna. See, this is not difficult for us to understand because Parashuram destroyed Kshatriya race and the Kshatriyas had to run away. They ran away to different, different places. In fact, Thailand, their national book is Ramakin, Glory of Ram. In fact, their capital till, the, till recently was Ayutthaya, derived from Ayodhya. In fact, most of the kings from Thailand's history are Rama 1, Rama 2. Like in England, they have Henry 1 you know, Henry too, like that. If you go to Germany, the Swabian Alp, there they found half man, half lion, DT, which is Narsimha Dev DT, and they did archaeological, what, what do they call? They do carbon, carbon dating. They found that DT to be 40,000 years old. How do you explain this? In fact, that's why Voltaire, have you heard, is one of the most famous French philosophers. He said this, I am convinced that everything has come down to us from the banks of the river Ganga. In fact, in fact, Ramayana is so all-pervading. See, the, the main principle of Ramayana is about love. And the principle of Ramayana is even today followed in Indian, it's part of Indian ethos. Like Ram, when his soldiers were dying, when Vanaras were dying, he kept the bodies of the Vanaras. And Ravana, when he saw his asuras are dying, you know what he did? He threw them in the ocean. Because he didn't want their bodies to be seen by Ram's army and, and they will get strength. So he dumped off. For him, for Ravana mentality is, my soldiers are my resource. I have to use them. For Ram, they were people. They had to be cared for. This is the ethos of Bharat. See, during the Kargil war, this was Ramayan principle was followed. Subconsciously, Indians were following this. See, Indian army was so gracious that Kargil war, they said so many people have died, but Pakistan was not releasing their list because they wanted to prove that they had less soldiers dying in the war. So eventually to prove that they won the war, they released only a small list saying that we lost only so many men. But there are so many bodies. So Pakistan refused to claim those bodies. Typical Ravana mentality, use our people, throw them away. So what Indian army did is astonishing. Indian army wrote letters and mentioning that these soldiers from your army fought very well. You should give them your equivalent of Parambir Chakra that you have. Not only that, Indian army flew in Malvis from Delhi in helicopters to perform the last rites of these soldiers who were fighting for Pakistan. What I'm going to say is that the mentality, the modern mentality of hedonism, using everything for sense gratification, that is the total antithesis of the culture of Ramayana. And Raman and Mahabharat, Bhagavad Gita, this is influencing thoughts not just of, you know, William Jones, 18th century, 19th century, even today, almost all the self-help gurus, they are influenced by India in some way or the other. I don't want to go on and on and on, the long list. Wayne Dyer, he used to, he was a student of Nisargadatta Maharaj near Pune. Our, uh, the number one right now is, uh, who is that very famous self-help motivational guru, uh, Tony Robbins. He comes to Kashi, every year and the greatest book America has ever produced philosophically is called Walden written by Henry David Thoreau and that book is heavily derived from Vedanta. His mentor Ralph Waldo Emerson while giving a lecture in Harvard, he spoke about uh, how seeing God, every, we should see God everywhere and he was banned from Harvard because he was said you are a pantheist speaking against Christianity. In fact, 
Oliver Wendell Holmes, Emerson, Thoreau, all of them came together and formed Boston Brahmin community. They never came to India. Even today on Wikipedia, you'll find a page, Boston Brahmin community. None of them are Brahmins. None of them are from India. But they knew what Vedanta is teaching. They knew what is Brahminism. They knew what is wisdom. In fact, Henry David Thoreau was a great student of Mother Ganga. He was a devotee while dying. His last words was India and he died. He used to do yoga, he used to worship Mother Ganga. Anyway, there's so much we can discuss. The essence of what I'm trying to say in the last next few minutes, I want to say this, that Srila Prabhupada said, Indians are so close to Ram. They are so close to Krishna, but they are turning towards the West. And Westerners are so far from Krishna, but they are coming towards Krishna. Bharata Bhumita Hoyle Manusha Janma Jar Janma Sartaka Kori Karo Paro Upakar Mahaprabhu said, Jiska Janma Bharat Bhumi Me Hua Hai Apna Janma Sartak Karo or Paro Upakar Karo. See, when I went to the airport to receive Russian devotees, they came out of the airport. You know what is the first thing they did? I was shocked. Spontaneously they offered Dandavat. Road pe. I was like, what are you doing? I was like, Bharat Bhumi. I am just saying how people are valuing what, what they are getting. So if you want to enter a metaphysical reality, you want to understand a reality beyond temporary things, this is the land where you can experience this shelter. See, there are different spaces we live in. How many of you have gone through suffering? Any kind of suffering? Yes. So suffering, so for what do we do when we are suffering for solution? We stimulate. We, we get some YouTube, Netflix, some, some uh, screening, some watch, some playing, some sports. We just want to stimulate ourselves when we suffer. But there is something higher. Entering Sattva Guna and experiencing satisfaction. There is something even higher. Shelter. And this shelter is beyond senses. I'll give an example. See if this makes sense. You know, all our senses, we can experience eyes, nose, here. One day I was in a garden and I go there for my walks. I was in the evening. One man, elderly man, he knows me, came and sat with me on the bench. And it was a windless day. And he sat next to me and he broke wind. He flatulated. And it was stinking. <laughs> I was, it was horrible. But I had to be polite. I had to smile at him, talk to him because I didn't want to. And he was constantly flatulating. Constantly. And I was like, oh, I was suffering, suffering, but I had to, and finally when he left, I got up and as soon as I got up, I went and jumped to, a, I went to the next bench and I sat there <sighs> and there one young couple came and they were heavily perfumed and that fragrance assaulted my nostrils. So the first one was suffering. This was a good, this was a good fragrance, but it was stimulating. It was Assault. You understand what I'm saying? It's like other extreme of sensual experience. First was suffering sensually. This was stimulating sensually. But I said, this is better than that. <laughs> <laughs> so I sat in the bench. But then this couple started their Ajamil pastime. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I had to get up. <laughs> uh, our Sudama Prabhu says, Ajamil can't happen because he saw that lady prostitute, Ajamil, and said, Ajamil. So that's why Ajamil. <laughs> His name is Ajamin. <laughs> so I was first suffering. You're getting this example? First there is suffering, then stimulation. Then I, I got up, I said, Are dono bekar experience. Then I walked, and when I walked ahead in the garden, I saw the gardener was putting water on the plants and roses. You know the water when it is mixed with earth. So that was going somewhere deeper than the nose, nostril. It was a, it was an experience beyond the nose. I'm sure all of you have this kind of experiences. First was suffering, second was stimulation, third was satisfaction. Then I came to temple, went to sleep. Next day morning, I got up at 4.30, came for Mangalarti. As soon as the curtain opened at 5, the fragrance from the altar of the garlands. Haribo! <laughs> Jai Shushi Adha Gopinath Bhagwan Ki Jai. 
So that fragrance entered the soul. So are you getting these four experiences? Suffering, second, stimulation, third, satisfaction, fourth, shelter. Shelter. And this shelter is at the level of the soul. Therefore, we request you, please come back to Krishna. Make a choice of Krishna. And when we enter the Krishna space, we enter this reality which is beyond sensual experiences. There is a very famous video. You can watch it on YouTube later. You type Malayalam Bhajan Contest. There was a Krishna Bhajan Contest. See, actually not Krishna Bhajan. It was a, like an Indian Idol program. In Kerala, there are three different contests covered by different channels, different participants, all children taking part. And in all the three contests, one ch different child was singing a famous Malayalam Krishna Bhajan. And the last part of that Bhajan is a very high pitch singing where they sing Krishna in a very high pitch. And amazingly, in all the three competitions, all the three different girls, all the different judges, different audience, all of them when they were in this peak high pitch of singing Krishna, all the girls broke down and they were crying. Just chanting Krishna's name at that Innocence, that purity brought tears in their eyes. In fact, one of the girls was a Muslim. She was in hijab. But just chanting Krishna so many times with intensity brings that emotion. Because this word Krishna is all attractive. Krishna is purifying. This helps us, this transports us to a metaphysical reality. Please, please chant Krishna's holy names. In fact, India is filled with this kind of powerful energies. How many of you have been to Vrindavan? You've seen Radha Raman Diti? Always smiling and suddenly in some photographs you will see Radharaman has two teeth. And this year, 1st January, Radharaman showed four teeth. You will find it, you will be shocked. Because Radharaman was very happy that Ayodhya temple is coming up. So, <laughs> How do you explain this? This is not Photoshop, everybody knows. From 1995, I'm hearing. Suddenly, I see Radha Raman's photograph. You will see. Suddenly, Radha Raman ji is smiling. Dan dikta. <laughs> like this, there are many places. You go to Seva Kunj. There, there you will see. Evening time. Vrindavan is filled with monkeys. Five o'clock, all the monkeys line me bar aate. Nobody enters that place because Radha and Krishna are going to perform past times. See, this is just. I'm giving one or two examples. You go to any. I'll give you one small remote place. This is a place called Mantralay in uh, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka border. There is a Raghavendra Swami Samadhi. I'm just giving you one small example. Raghavendra Swami is incarnation of Prahlad Maharaj in Madhva Sampradaya. He went into Samadhi in 1660 or something. Live Samadhi. He said, Mere upar Samadhi bana do. And he said, I'll be like this for the next 600 years or something. I will be there. So then in 1799, Anglo Mysore war happened. Tipu Sultan was killed. Thomas Munro was the governor general. He wanted to acquire that land. He came to Mantrala, he said, this land, some agreements are happening and these people are saying, no, this is our Raghavendra Swamiji Samadhi, you can't take this. He said, let me see what is this place. So he entered, but he was a cultured British man. So he, before entering, he knew the culture, so he removed his hat, he removed his shoes and he entered. And suddenly he started speaking in English. Oh, yes, good morning. And then he's nodding his head and he's speaking. For one hour he was talking and all the pujaris and they're all watching. This is 1799. A simple village in Mantralay where Raghavendra Swami Samadhi is there and he's like... And after that he came out and he looked at all of them and he said, I will not take this land. They said, why? No, your Swamiji is insisting that you people are very faithful and we should keep this. He spoke to you. But he went into Samadhi 130 years ago. Yeah, he spoke to me in fluent English. Fluent English! <laughs> See, this is not some mythology. This is real. This is documented because East India Company was shocked when he said, I'm not taking this land. So then he had to explain to the East India Company, he wrote to them saying that there is a live saint there, mystical saint. So East India Company thought, hey, Amara Thomas Munro, PK gaya <laughs> So <laughs> they appointed a subcommittee. This is, a, this, is a, this is all documented. They appointed a subcommittee to investigate whether Sir Thomas Munro was drunk that day when he went to that place. But that subcommittee ka pura report hai. The report says, Sir Thomas Munro was in order. He was not drunk. <laughs> so this you will find. This is in Madras Gazette. 
page 213, chapter 11. 130 years after Raghavendra Swami's Samadhi, this was, this incident happened. In fact, Thomas Munro was so much affected, he went back to England after retirement and he told his family, every generation after his death, they make it a point to come to Mantralaya and pay respect to Raghavendra Swami. Two years ago, their fifth generation came. All of them came in sadi. The men came in dhoti. <laughs> and they took Mantrakshad and went back to England. See, these... <laughs> Actually, there is, uh, there is so much in India is happening. We are in the sacred land of Bharat, where so many saints have come, so many devotees of Krishna have come. So I request all of you, I will end here because I want to take some questions also. But just before ending, I want to, I want to appeal to all of you that please explore this metaphysical reality. Connect yourself to Krishna through hearing, chanting, service. And if you find that Prabhuji, after chanting for so many years also, I am not able to connect to Krishna, then I would request you slow down your life. Slow down, write journals, thoda breathing karo, prayers karo. Journal, I write journals every day. I can speak for three hours on journaling. <laughs> Journal writing is very good. It helps you connect with Krishna the best way. Sukoon milta hai do loves kagas par utar kar. Sukoon milta hai do loves kagas par utar kar. Jor se cheek bhi leta hoon aur awaz bhi nahi hoti. <laughs> so it is very powerful. So <clears throat> I request all of you to explore a relationship with Krishna through journaling, through praying, through chanting. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So thank you, Guru. It was a nice class. So now uh, we request all of you, if you have any question, you can raise your hand and we'll send you send the mic to you. If you have any question. Hare Krishna. Thank you. So no thank you. First time or a Okay, time. there is a one question. Mike bhej rahe aapko. Nahi, bolne do, mic aayega, tab continue karenge. Hare Krishna. Guruji, you gave example that when, when you were uh, sitting on, uh, beneath the banyan tree and uh, that you were, you were able to feel that how much uh, past time he was, uh, means from how many long time he was, he, it was existing. So, Guruji means it also requires a kind of peace and some our conscious that we can feel it. So, and you also mentioned that you visited uh, uh, some place and you were seeing uh, towards the stars and so that we are also not able to Ruji means in think in that way because it also required a sense of peace and and uh, like because in, of, in the era of virtual reality we are uh, indulged in mobile phone like scrolling YouTube so many of the time I feel that I remain uh, confused and uh, like reading uh, abilities decreasing so, Puruji, how we can enhance yeah. that thing? Actually, this is ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder is common now. It's increasing rampantly. So, Carl Newport has written a very beautiful book called Deep Work. So, a lot of studies are proving that if you really want to do deep work and get a lot of results, even forget spiritual life, even materially, then you need to have prolonged time you need to spend in concentration, focus. So, for that, uh, smartphone is the biggest challenge. So what we do is, many of us, just like earlier we used to do Ekadashi, we used to don't eat grains. So now our Ekadashi version has changed. We continue not eating grains, but we also follow once a week 
fasting from phones, smartphones. I know we can't fast completely. So what we can do is, in my sadhana card, there is one column where I write uh, how many hours I have consciously not used the phone. Like for example, today morning, I woke up at 3 o'clock and I switched on my phone at 9.30. So that's how many hours I didn't? Six and a half hours. So I, I wrote 6.30. Then at 9.45, I switched off the phone again because I had to reply to some messages. And 12.45, again, I switched it on. That's three more hours. So today, I have spent nine and a half hours without the smartphone. So like that, we can begin. Now, then rest of it, after that, I had to keep the phone on because I had some meetings and somebody was coming to meet me, all of that. What I'm saying is we need to, we need to know how to use the phone judiciously. Otherwise, uh, we'll be helpless. And there are lots and lots of studies. In fact, there is a whole uh, bunch of, you'll find TEDx talks on how smartphone is extremely, extremely debilitating. So, so to connect to spiritual reality, metaphysical reality, we need to learn to navigate through this crisis. This is a crisis of 21st century. I'm not saying don't use a smartphone, don't get me wrong. Social media, we are living at an age when all this is a necessity. But I, I also think if you have good association, see how many of you, see you came for this class today. I don't know how many of you come regularly for satsang programs like this. If you come, you are in a safe zone. See nowadays people want short reels. Because attention span is reducing. But actual churning happens when you can sit for long hours in a class. This is called the strategy of embracing pain. See, we have, we have not been taught to embrace pain. From childhood, we have been taught that you want to be happy and remove pain. But you ask any person who's evolved, they'll say that Zindagi mein kuchi ke toda. Jo muskura raha hai. उसे दर्द ने पाला होगा जो मुस्कुरा रहा है उसे दर्द ने पाला होगा जो चल रहा है उसके पांव में छाला होगा बिना संघर्ष के इंसान चमक नहीं सकता जो जलेगा उसी दिए में तो उजाला होगा तो यू नीड टू यू नीड टू लर्न टू sit in meditation, chant for two hours, hear class for one hour. Basically, you need to sit in that space. Without that, you can't get spiritual realization. You can't just look for quick fixes. It's not a pill that you swallow and get realization. Even in material life, specialized Navy commando training, Marcos, you know, Marine commandos. America, they are very famously known as Navy SEALs. So they have one training called, uh, interesting, Hell week. Matlab, ek week aapko narak ka hell week is when 140 hours of training with only two hours of rest in the night and two hours to toilet, eating, talking, whatever. 140 hours in a week of training. It's called hell week because it makes you go through hell. And it is designed to break you. And 90% of the people, they are not able to complete the hell week. And there are some, interesting, they have done three hell weeks in their life. It says that if you do one hell week, five years from your life is taken away. It is so rigorous training. And they interviewed and they found out how some people are able to complete that. And how some people are not able to complete. Those who are not able to complete, they keep calculating. But those who are able to complete it, they are not thinking of how many hours is left. They are thinking, I don't like this. This is tough, but I accept it and I'm in the present. They're in that mood. They are, they are embracing the pain. See, without learning to embrace pain, we can't get spiritual realizations. And as long as we have smartphones, we'll keep getting bewildered. Jana kidar tha, na jane kaha bad raha hun. Dusron ki kismat likhni thi, ab kud ki lakirein pad raha hun. Gussa sab se hun, par kud se lad raha hun. Haasil to nahi kiya kuch, phir bhi sab kuch khone se dar raha hun. In dharkanon par mat jao, zinda ho, magar andar se mar raha ho. So, in essence, 
to cut the long story short my answer to your question is there is no shortcut there is no shortcut to this okay thank you for your question it's a very relevant question and timely question this is the need of the hour actually thank you guruji thank you jai shri shri radha gopinath bhagwan ki jai so any other question please raise your hand mike will come to you yeah you can send the mic behind yeah he has raised raise his hand thank thank you for such a wonderful class this evening <clears throat> so my question is little relevant to the topic and little it may not be sorry can you kind of say that last sentence again i told thank you for such a wonderful class <clears throat> so my question uh, may be little relevant to the topic or little it may not be so i wanted to ask one thing that uh, even i have read few scriptures and the scriptures that you had mentioned are very powerful and uh, we must have a faith so on it to believe the entire philo philosophy so uh, as you mentioned uh, in india it's a very pure land where there is there are where there is a provision to practice devotional service in a very easy way and as well as very hard manner like uh, <clears throat> so uh, and in scriptures uh, it is mentioned that in if we read in bhagavatam or somewhere that just by uh, hearing the verse of bhagavatam or just by chanting uh, this hare krishna mantra uh, our sins are vanished and we attain perfection on the similar hand there in uh, there is another extreme situations where in scriptures like garud puran and all it's mentioned very horrifying circumstances of whatever sins we perform so it's uh, like this scriptures are written that is that is not an issue but it is not a very systematic process like if there is an easy provision also to practice in a way so i am confused like what is the destination of a living entity if he practices devotional service as well and by mistake or by some uh, without his knowledge he performs any sinful activities as well like i will give an example of uh, nrugu maharaj uh he was a very saint and pious person but by mistake he donated a cow of a brahmin and he had to suffer a life of a he got a birth of a chameleon in the next birth so this is just an example and i got uh, confused so uh, this is my uh, question so you are asking how to understand the various contradictions in scriptures and statements where yeah there People are two extreme, so much. extreme there are two extreme yeah, situations extreme, in scripture exactly. like there is an easy yeah, way easy way also uh, and extremely yeah, difficult yeah. also really. so therefore first rule of studying scriptures is tad vidhi pranipate na pari prashnena sevaya upadekshyanti te gyanam gyaninas tatva darshana vedic scriptures are never studied independently fourth chapter of gita text number 13 krishna says that we study the scriptures under the shelter of a guru we we enquire we also serve and that purifies that is the first rule okay so we don't simply take statements just like that and second see scriptures contain both statements somebody is very new to encourage him you will find statements like ek bar ek mantra pa, bolo aapka uddhar ho jayega so person gets encouraged to come to devotional service but there are some people who are very nalayak you know they are like they will be in bhakti but they will say are hamara to uddhar ho gaya humne to ek bar bahut bar kar liya so to shake them scriptures contain statements like bau janma kare yadi shravana kirtan tabu to na paaye pade krishna premadan bau janmon tak bhi hari naam lo aapko krishna nahi milenge hum bole gare ye to pura extreme ho gaya that is to shake us because sometimes we get complacent right so hamara scriptures ka mood kya hai malum hai comfort the afflicted jo bahut ghayal hai usko pyar se उसको सांत्वना दो कंफर्ट द एफ्लिक्टेड एंड एफ्लिक्ट द कंफर्टेड जो कंफर्टेबली बैठा है उसको सो वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड सो व्हेन वी रीड सच स्टेटमेंट्स ना व्हेन वी रीड स्टेटमेंट विच इज वेरी हैवी यू शुड अंडरस्टैंड ये उस समय के लिए है उस कॉन्टेक्स्ट के लिए जब हम कंप्लेसेंट हो रहे हैं 
और जब आपको बहुत प्यारा स्टेटमेंट मिल रहा है एंकरेजिंग स्टेटमेंट मिल रहा है दैट इज वेन यू आर डिप्रेस यू शुड रीड दो स्टेटमेंट्स वेन आई एम लाइक डाउन आई रीड एंकरेजिंग स्टेटमेंट वेन आई एम कंप्लेसेंट आई रीड स्केरी स्टेटमेंट बट ओवरऑल ऑल ऑफ दिस इज टेकन केयर इन कल युगा कलेर दोष निधे राजन अस्ति एको महान गुना कीर्तना देव कृष्ण से मुक्त संग परम ब्रजेत सिंपली चैंटिंग कमिंग इन एसोसिएशन ऑफ डिवोटीज दिस इज अ वेरी ईजी पाथ सिंपल हैप्पी एट द सेम टाइम वन हैज टू बी केयरफुल जस्ट बिकॉज ईजी डबेंट मीन वी बिकम कंप्लेसेंट सो दिस इज वेरी वेरी बैलेंस्ड विद द स्क्रिप्चर्स है गिवन अस अ पाथ बाई विच इफ यू आर कंप्लेसेंट यू नो हाउ टू बिकम अलर्ट एंड इफ यू फीलिंग डिस्करेज बिकॉज ऑफ टू मच स्ट्रिक्टनेस then you need to see mainly na you need to study the scriptures and also take responsibility then you will be able to harmonize all of this most of these things are revealed from within see we you simply studying scriptures will not help you understand this scriptures ka magic hai it is like it is like it is revealed when we do seva you know one one devotee was telling me once grahastha prabhu ji aap itna din bhar scriptures padhte hain पर आप में और मेरे में अंतर क्या है बहुत फर्क है तेरी और मेरी तालीम में तालीम मतलब एजुकेशन ही सेड बहुत फर्क है तेरी और मेरी तालीम में तूने उस्तादों से सीखा है मैंने हालातों से सो सो यू हैव टू लर्न यू हैव टू ग्रो सी यू हैव टू स्टडी स्क्रिप्चर्स आल्सो एंड यू हैव टू ऑल्सो टेक रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज इन योर लाइफ डू योर ड्यूटीज लाइक लॉर्ड राम लक्ष्मण सीता भरत perform duties and study scriptures that will give you a good uh, what to say uh, that will be that will give a good uh, mixture of realizations and it will help you resolve there is one very famous psychologist when he was a medical student in jj medical college go i used to go with goranga prabhu we used to take i used to take kichdi for him and in every class before the class ended prabhu ji that boy would ask questions challenging questions every class Oh, is like that. Why is like that? And Prabhu Ji, Gorang Prabhu would answer patiently. And one day, Gorang Prabhu said, "Acha, Prabhu, suno. One minute. Question. Baad mein answer karta hu. Aapka ek, mera ek question hai. Amara barsa na mein I camp hota hai every year. Why don't you go for I camp and do some seva this year? He said, "Okay, I will go." He went for that I camp, did seva of Brajwasis for one month. And after one month, he again came back. Again, the class continued. After the weekly class, any questions? And everybody looked at that boy. He had no questions. So Gorang Prabhu said, "Are question nahi puchh rahe?" सब आंसर हो गया कुछ <laughs> सेवा करके वो जो अंदर से ना स्वयं एवं स्फुरत अदा इट्स रिवील्ड सो मेनी ऑफ दिस कॉन्ट्रडिक्शन गेट रिजॉल्व लाइक दैट व्हेन वी डू सेवा इज दैट ओके बिकॉज इट हैज टू बी स्टडीड अंडर गुरु इन अ मूड ऑफ सर्विस एंड आल्सो नोइंग दैट फॉर दोज आर एफ्लिक्टेड देर इज कम्फर्ट एंड फॉर दोज आर कम्फर्टेबल दे आर एफ्लिक्ट ओके Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. It makes sense. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna.